should have seen this coming. When you put too much trust into one person it leaves you vulnerable. The whole thing took us by surprise. I still can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Yeah, I'm Will, and uh, I've been in the real estate business for 30 years, and I've done just about everything from development, uh, asset management, uh, property management, and corporate strategy, uh, space planning, and even contract negotiation. We're, we're a financial services company, a national financial services company that offers a range of services and also has a range of uh, different facility types, including uh, high-rise office, uh, data centers, uh, specialty facilities, and even retail storefronts. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm vice president of corporate real estate here, and I have uh, responsibility for all of our owned and leased real estate facilities and, and how those facilities support our co company goals and values and uh, so, so because of that the space has to be uh, safe, healthy, cost efficient and productive and, and all that has to make uh, for a great experience for our employees and our customers. And so uh, you know the real estate is, is also in part a, re a reflection on who we are as a brand uh, for attracting and retaining team members and again, also for our customers. Well, you know, not really. I think our senior executives thought that the IT department has anything with the word cybersecurity covered in their responsibility. Uh, you know, as for me, I, I didn't, I don't have knowledge or resources to build an IT department within my department. And uh, so you have to understand that in real estate, there's, there's just tremendous uh, fragmentation. Uh, for example, the elevator contractor doesn't manage the building automation system. Uh, the parking contractor doesn't manage the lighting control system and it goes on and on. And so since we're pretty big, you know, for every hundred buildings that I have, uh, we might have uh, six to eight hundred building systems, uh, building control systems. So that means two to three hundred service companies which again means I might have 3,000 different technicians uh, touching my building control systems throughout that 100 buildings. So it, to me, it seems nearly impossible to manage all of that, especially when you add another dimension of all the turnover that occurs in real estate. So, you know, yes, I've, I've thought about it, but, but where could I even begin? And I mean, uh, now, having said that, I will say that IT has required that I use the corporate network for some of my contractors for their remote access to the building. Uh, but since they don't um, uh, have budget or staffing capacity themselves, they haven't provided that in all the facilities that I have. So that leaves me exposed in some places. And uh, in addition to that, I tried to tell them that putting these systems and contractors on the corporate network without having strict policy in some way to know if they're following that policy might be worse than not putting them on the corporate network at all. Well, I had a senior national facility uh, manager working for me who was really good. He knew all the facilities, the systems, the contractors. He ran the building systems really well, uh, you know, so I thought. Uh, but uh, he was let go for cause and naturally uh, he was removed from all system access and privileges as, as you would expect. Uh, but what we didn't know is that the systems that he was in charge of, you know, particularly our building automation, were, were very poorly configured. So essentially they were an Achilles heel uh, for upwards of a hundred buildings. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you guessed it. When, when, when he was removed from the credentials, uh, all of those systems shut down. And I mean, they shut down. 
we we didn't know why at first uh, they were just offline which meant a, a uh, it was a mad scramble across many states we had to send people home we had to stop work we had canceled events I mean it was a nightmare that cost us millions and and created some safety risk frankly Well, we've taken building system cybersecurity much more seriously, as you can imagine. Um, but we really have broadened it to to more include vendor and staff risk management. Because, you know, in this case, the incident wasn't even about what most people consider cybersecurity, because it was uh, it was an internal systems and people problem. Uh, so we could have had a Fort Knox approach to remote access that we touched on earlier, uh, but but this would have still happened. So uh, we have now learned uh, we have to address all three major risk areas to actually solve the problem. And those three risk areas are, are the networking and remote access, but also the building systems themselves and how they're configured. And also, as we mentioned earlier, the people and the policy. So it only takes one of those areas to bring down the whole building we've now learned. Uh, so we've got a much more fulsome uh, view uh, due to this, this very uh, rough experience we had. Well, we, we couldn't just add the user back once deleted, so we ended up hiring a consulting firm and also dealing directly with the manufacturer to try to put this thing back together. And it, um, I mean, it took over 6,000 man hours and several weeks elapsed time uh, to get all of the systems back fully online. Most companies with smart building technology develop dependence on one or two key individuals to be the knowledge keeper of control systems within their buildings. While it is great to have a person like this on staff, it is important to have policies and procedures that govern all users of the building systems. But just having policy and procedures is not enough. The staff and contractors must be educated on what the policies and procedures are, how they are implemented, and each person's roles and responsibilities. Having this in place would have prevented this outcome.